Jesus. Come on. Come on, five more seconds. The best praise. Oh, what an incredible moment. And I love that song. I just love the lyric, thinking about this semester where there was a wall, God made a way. Come on, AC. And here we are standing. Here we are. You've made it. You're to this point. It's hard to believe this is our last in-person day at Highlands College this semester. Hey, four semesters, where are you guys at? Raise your hands. We love you. If, hey, if you're near four semester, high five them, fist bump them, tell them you love them. We are, we're so, we're so proud of you guys. And uh, hey, HC family forever, forever. And uh, God's done so much this semester, but I'm so proud of you four semesters. Uh, the other day after spending time with you, just reflecting on your, your entire journey, how every time there was a wall, God made a way. And we know God has great plans for you. This is not goodbye. This is, this. Is a, we are together for life. HC family for life. We're so proud of you guys. And today, today's a special day uh, for, for all of you guys um, in HC current students. We got a chapel double dip. And so we got now and then got some amazing moments later on today. And we're gonna celebrate Expedition. We got a new trophy that we're gonna unveil today, which is, just wait, y'all have no idea. It's massive. Matt, Matt went above and beyond. That's one of our values. Pastor Matt went above and beyond. And so it's gonna be a lot of fun, but really today, I think all of us who are currently part of the HC family wanna celebrate a really special group, and that is everybody here for preview day. Come on, HC. So glad to have you guys. It's, uh, I mean, truly, truly amazing. And uh, Jordan sent me this text, and I, I mean, the, li the list is crazy, but there's people from literally se over 75 students from literally all over uh, the country. Here it is, check this out, and, and the world. I mean, Alabama, Mississippi. We got students, got students visiting from Texas, Florida, North Carolina, Tennessee, Louisiana, Georgia, Ohio, California, Illinois, Missouri, Michigan, and check this out, Somalia right now today in the house. That's awesome. And so, uh, preview day, folks, parents, students, we're so honored to have you truly on behalf of Pastor Chris, our chancellor, uh, myself, um, my wife, Jill, all of our team. So honored to have you guys today. You're our honored guest today, and we're praying for you. We've been praying for you. Uh, of course, today is often about details. You're here to get answers to questions, and we do our best to do that. Uh, but more than anything today, we're really praying for a touch from God. And I, I've said this, and our, our students would have heard this many times now, but I say this, we're just, we're praying for you to have a peace and just a moment where you realize God has called you here. Because we know God has called you. What, what today's about is, is this the place? You have a call of God on your life. We're praying that God speaks to you so clearly today and that it's marked by his peace. I have a verse I wanna read uh, for you guys especially. I think that's just so powerful. It's Acts 20, 22. This is Paul speaking. He says now, and now compelled by the spirit, I am going to Jerusalem. And that word in the original language is really is a word picture of a lasso. It's like the Holy Spirit saying, I'm lassoing you, I'm throwing this around you and I'm pulling you into your destiny. I'm pulling you into your purpose. And we're praying that over your life today. If you're here checking it out, that there will be a moment where you're compelled by the Holy Spirit, not to Jerusalem, but to Birmingham. Come on somebody, that you feel that presence or that pull. But honestly, if it's not here, we know it's somewhere and it's an honor to have hosted you today and we know this will be part of your journey. And so we're just again praying for you guys today. We're gonna go back into a moment of worship and then Pastor Matt's gonna come up and preach in a moment. It's gonna be good. Hey, it's gonna be good. And so let's open our hearts up. Everybody ready for all that God wants to do? Does anybody believe God can do anything? And I know that some of us personally have some walls that are still there. And I'm gonna pray right now in this moment that they just disappear in the name of Jesus, that he does a great work in your life today. God, we love you. Come on, students, let's lift our hands. We love you. We worship you. We are here for you. It is to your name and your renown. God, that is the, that is the aim of our life. And God, we pray over these next few moments as your presence move, that moves, as that walls would fall, that miracles would happen, that God, words of knowledge and wisdom and God, just a prophetic destiny would be spoken. There is nothing, God, that we wanna hold on to. We let you have complete control. In Jesus' name, amen. darkness 
this falls, it won't prevail. Cause the God I serve knows only how to triumph. Oh, my God will never. Come on, you better say it louder. Yes. Oh, my God will never. Come on, we lift it up. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory.
sing it again. I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the
I'm in. He's never lost a battle and he never will. So come on, every single voice, we declare this out over every person. funny story. Uh, I wasn't scheduled to be here today and was, I'm hosting a pastor friend uh, in town. Uh, Y'all say hello to my friend, Pastor Jim LaFoon, everybody. Give him a hand. And uh, he, he's been here training our intercessors. He's a, he's got a prophetic gift on his life and uh, he is a prophet and a uh, dear friend. And anyway, so I'm hosting him today and I was showing him Grandview and I heard I heard some music coming out from this place today, and I said, would you like to go see these students? And uh, so we, we kind of snuck in the side here. Again, wasn't scheduled to be here today. And then our team says, hey, we have uh, 70 prospective students and their families, 130 people here. Come on, say hello to the preview guests. Come on, give them a good hand, make them feel welcome. <laughs> Well, anyway, that, that, I, then I said, hey, can I go up there and say hi, you know, since I'm here? So, hi, everybody. So good to see you. Have I told you lately how much I love you? Have I told you lately how much I believe in you? Have I told you today that I prayed for you this morning? And I know without a shadow of a doubt, you're going to change the world. You're going to do it. It's going to happen. And so, so you guys are headed for break, right? When's that happen? Is that after today. And did you guys already get your book from, did you get your book? You're getting it? Okay, after today. All right, so I got, I told you I was gonna get you that book, right? So I told you I would. All right, so you'll get it today. And um, so if you like to read, it's it's written as a fable. And then the last couple of chapters is the, is the leadership lesson. And so, so if you like fables and stories, you'll love it. If you don't, just go to the end of the book, all right? Just read the leadership lesson. It's good all by itself, <laughs> all right? But anyway, enjoy it. Let me pray for you and just bless you as you go on break. And um, and I want to just thank the, 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 the guests that are here today for even considering this place. And parents, I know for you, um, that's such a huge decision. And uh, the Holy Spirit will speak to you today. I know he will. And just listen to his voice. He'll guide you and direct you. And there are, there are a lot of great places. We think this is one of the best, if not the best. So, Father, thank you for these amazing students. Lord, I'm praying, God, your richest blessings over them, body, soul, and spirit. God, I pray that the angels of the Lord would, would just surround them during this break in their health, in their minds, in their soul, in their spirit. God, I pray that it's not a downtime. It's not a time we wander. God, it's a time where we actually get closer to you, to our families, to our purpose, and to our calling. God, I just speak your richest blessings over them in the mighty name of Jesus. Open your hands before the Lord and just receive this. Lord, bless you, keep you, make his face shine upon you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you the peace that passes all understanding. I bless them. I thank you for them in the name of Jesus. And everybody said amen. Come on, sing it again. The earth will shake. Come on, lift your voice. Oh, the earth.
Amen, amen. What an amazing time of worship. Hey, look to your left and to your right and greet your neighbor and go find the prospective student and tell him that. Hey. How are we doing, AC? How are we doing, everybody? Let's go! Hey, y'all, y'all hang tight. Stay standing up just for a second. Um, hey, first of all, we, we need to all, I don't know if you guys, I watched this from the front row. None of us knew PC was walking in today. And so I was praying like in the spirit for Garrett the entire time. Like, as soon as, because Garrett was like in his keys. He was in a moment, he was going, and he looked left, and PC walked by. And he went, so, hey, y'all give it for the worship team, everybody. Come on, did a great job. It was amazing. Um, now, hey, I, I do want to just take a second, and, and y'all know, man, we have a culture of honor here, and uh, for, for prospective students, our, our guests today, we start every chapel off, I mean, every every pre-service meeting honoring people, and uh, and it's not because everybody is worthy of honor all the time, because we all mess up, it's because we're people of honor. That's who we are. It's what we do. And so, I want to take a second, and just got to wait till the end, but I was just thinking about this morning, but all the people that you guys never see, so students, so all the, I mean, I'm thinking about like Don, who who works in administration and helps out. And I'm thinking about, um, hold on, I know y'all can't do it. It's like one of those graduations where everything goes crazy. Um, no, but I'm thinking about like even, you know, our academics team and accounting and people that are doing things that you'll never see. And as students, man, just what a semester it's been. I don't think you guys know. As crazy as it was for you, and hey, was it, was it a crazy semester or what, everybody? It was a crazy semester. But imagine them with their families and their own stuff they've got going on in their personal lives, your small group leaders, like everybody else who's doing this because they love Jesus and then because they love you. That's the reason. I think we should go crazy for everybody that makes Highlands College happen. Everybody, come on. Come on, give it up for the team, everybody. Y'all are the best. Y'all can grab a seat, everybody. Gary, you're great. Thank you. So y'all get it for Garrett, everybody. Come on, Gary's the best. I need that hat. It's like the second week in a row that I've said I wish I, like, I'm a little jealous of, of Garrett's fit. Um, y'all, I'm thinking back, and I remember, th- just, just tr- backtrack with me a little bit, remember the first week of, of, of school, and there was a little like, we were as a student life team, we were like, hey, what can we do? We need to have this moment, this, this culture moment, and, uh, and this dance party broke out on the first floor of the parking deck. Everybody, you guys remember that? And then I'm thinking, like, sports. What sports can we play? And we settled on kickball. And some of you are like, well, that's not going to be competitive. And I think we saw that we can have, still have some character formation with kickball. Everybody, we saw that. Um, and, uh, yeah, just, just seeing. Um, also, I remember back to small groups first starting up and what it was like. I mean, do we Zoom? Do we meet at the church? Do we do outdoor space? Like, just navigating all of that. And, uh, and chapel moments and all we've experienced in chapels. Today's that day where it's like we made it. The semester is coming to a close from a face-to-face. Don't skip class next week. Two more weeks, everybody. Uh, remote. Um, Miss Cheryl Larson wanted you to know that. I had to throw that in. Um, but we're at this moment where, hey, today's the last day of face-to-face. It is that moment. It's that moment every time that we, we close out a semester, and we feel it uh, as staff because I don't. We and we you heard us say this. I don't think you realize how fast. Two years goes by. It just goes by quick. 
it's like you're in and you're out. Um, and if you're feeling that way, I've talked to some students who are like, man, it's the break. I'm so excited. Some of you are staying in Birmingham. You're like, man, this is Birmingham, Alabama. I'm staying here during the break, going to be here the entire time. And some of you are going back home. I've talked to students who are nervous about what they're walking back into. Um, family situations, friend situations. You're like, man, I'm, I'm just, I'm walking back in and I haven't seen these people in a while. And this is a little bit of a, a protective environment on purpose. And we did this on purpose. But I want to talk to you today just about, um, about why you came here. And so are you guys ready to do this? Just point number one. I want you to write this down. Point number one. Here it is. Write this down somewhere. I came here to leave. I did not come here to stay here. None of us go get gas in our car and fill up and then pull off to a spot in the parking lot of the gas station and say, I'm good, I have arrived. This was, this was the whole point. Now you come and fill up because you got another place you need to go. There's another destination God wants to take you to. There's more work to be done. And so I want to dig into the break and what the break looks like. And I know this from a pastoral care um, standpoint, a lot of times, and this is just the, the reality of, of what we do, a lot of the, um, I don't know, just a, lot of, a lot of more stumbling blocks, a lot of struggles, a lot of uh, calls that we get during semester breaks we get from students that we would not get during the semester, and it's because the routine is, is, has, been, has been pulled back. There's no more institutional dialogue on here. You need to be in this place at this time. You need to do this. You need to read this. You need to prepare for this. You need to study for this. But here's what I think the bigger thing is. Uh, the reason it gets harder during the breaks is not because of all that. It's because during the semester, right now, as Highlands College students, I mean, you guys have been really, really focused on the mission of the semester. Amen, everybody? Just focused on the mission of the semester. And I want to encourage you today to focus not on the mission of the semester, the mission of your life. The mission of your life. And the mission of your life is not a practicum. The mission of your life is not even to be a graduate of Highlands College. Think about this. God did not send his son to die on a cross and pay for your sins and redeem you and heal you and set you free so you could say, I'm a student at Highlands College. He did that for the gospel to put something in you that regardless of your institutional affiliation would carry on every other place you went every other place you went. So you came here to leave. Some of you, four semesters, you're leaving, and it's like, I'm, I'm leaving class. Some of you are leaving, going home. Some of you are just leaving, going back uh, to the Outlook, and you're, you're going to work a part-time job. You still have a mission. There is still stuff to do. You can take a break from class. The enemy wants you to take a break from your mission. <laughs> do not take a break from your mission. You have a mission to impact people everywhere you go, with the gospel. Everybody said the gospel. It's a big, big word. Okay, so we hear this word a lot. We hear this word gospel. You heard it in church. If you grew up in church, we talk about it here. Um, it, it's, it's, a, it's a great word. We're going to break it down in just a second. But I want to tell a story first. Um, uh, when I was a kid, and I think every family has this kid. Maybe not. Maybe it was just, we were, there's only two of us, my brother and I. But I was this kid that I was super, super fired up every day. Every day about one thing. Every single day. I was the kid that could not wait for the mail to come. <laughs> In fact, I have a picture of me as a kid. You guys want to see this? Yeah. Just throw that stuff here. Um, that's me on, your, on your, uh, your left there looking at that. That's my brother, Wes. And uh, that's the first drum I ever got. Come on, that's where it all started right there, everybody. Uh, we're both wearing matching pajamas. And um, how, how many of you guys can relate to footy pajamas? Come on, footy pajamas. <laughs> If you were going to shock your sibling or your parents with some static electricity, there was no better way to get to win that battle than footy pajamas. Also, I want to point out something that's disturbed me now as, a, as an adult. Um, a couple of things. If you're new to, to Highlands College or to Highlands, the best drink to, offer, to, to get in the Highlands Cafe is a Winnie the Pooh. Okay, you need to order a Winnie the Pooh. It's a honey cinnamon latte. I get it with oat milk. Uh, it's amazing. Um, but... We are both wearing shirts that has a pantsless bear on the shirt. I don't know if you guys have ever noticed that. And just as an adult, that bothers me now. I'm like, why? That would not be appropriate with any other cartoon character at all. But we never asked any questions about this bear. Okay, so you can take the picture down. Um, my mom posted that on Facebook like six weeks ago. And I was like, thank you, Patricia, for that. Um, throwing that out there. It's really... 
it's really, really helpful for me to explain that to everybody. Um, no, but here, here's what the gospel is. This is why I got so excited about the, at the mail. So before email, and none of you guys that were, you know, students, you don't even know what that was like. But before email, if someone you loved was going to send you something, um, there was no exact arrival time of when it might show up. And so if it was your birthday, come on, some of, some of the adults are tracking with me over here on this side. If it was your birthday, it could be seven days early. It might be 18 days late. But you just wanted it to arrive. You didn't get picky when, when it was coming because you were just like, I know there's a good message coming sometime in this box. The reason you got excited about it, though, was not because of the message, because the mailbox got messages every single day. Some of the messages said, you owe us money. Some of the messages said, you ought to buy this product. But sometimes you get a message that wasn't just a good message. It was from a good messenger. I mean, it was like, Grandma, come on, somebody. When Grandma slips you that 10 spot, says, baby, I love you. And you felt like you were the richest kid on the planet. You walk him all the way back to the house like George Jefferson, just like, hey, just going back to get it. And here's what the gospel is. The gospel, it's not just a good message. It's a good message with a good messenger. That's what the gospel is. And so for us to go out, your mission is the gospel. Everybody say, my mission is the gospel. You can't just share the gospel as a message. You also have to be a good messenger when you share it. So I want to talk about those two things. I want to talk about the gospel being a good message from a good messenger. And first, I just want to talk about what a good messenger is, how to be a good messenger. Let's look at this verse from Isaiah 52, 7. It says this, How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news, who proclaim peace. You want to know what you, want to, you need to do during the break? You need to proclaim peace. You need to bring good tidings. You need to proclaim salvation. You need to say to everybody you come in contact with, Hey, man, our God reigns. He's got it. The most beautiful thing to God. This, this, this blows my mind. You've heard Pastor Chris tell the story about when Joseph was lost in Colorado and how he lost one of his kids. If you've been on Highlands for any amount of time, you've heard this, that he was not concerned with the found kids. He was like, who's going to help me find Joseph? Who's going to help me find my son? And I think God looks at where you're going to be during the break, and he's asking, who's going to help me find my lost kids? I don't think he's asking, hey, can you get as much rest from school as possible? I think he's asking, who's going to help me find my lost kids during the break? That's what he's asking. Uh, another verse, Jesus shares this, and y'all heard this verse. Preview day, you've heard this verse. You've seen it in videos. It's everywhere at Highlands College. Luke 10, 2, he told them, y'all say this, the what? The harvest is plentiful, but the Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Your harvest is not your Highlands College class. Wherever you're going, your part-time job, your city you're walking into, wherever you're going, your parents' house, your family's house for the holidays, and you've got those family, because we've all got those family. I hope they don't come. You've got those family. Everybody's got a little Jerry Springer in their family. Everybody, everybody's got it out there. Here's the deal, though. Hey, hey, Highlands College, look at me real quick. There's a harvest that we, the, the fruit's ready. All God's saying is, hey, during the break, can you give me the eight, nine, ten weeks? And can you be one of my workers? Even though school's not in session, can you lean in? Here's the crazy thing. It's already been planted. It's already been tilled. It's already been pruned. It's already been protected. And God's just looking for us to go out and say, hey, God, I'll, I'll help you. I'll pick that. I got it. The work has been done. He's just asking us to go out and commit to keep working because you came here to leave. One day you're graduating and your mission for the rest of your life, no matter what you do, not as a Highlands College graduate, as a follower, as a disciple, come on, not just a follower, a disciple of Jesus Christ is to go and find fruit and get them in the kingdom of heaven. That's our job. Keep going. My goal today is I want you to look at your semester break that way. Hey, this, this is a break from school, and it feels good. To, uh, I, can I tell you, I love you guys. I'm, I'm ready for you to go home, too. I just want to tell you that. <laughs> can I get an amen from anybody on the Highlands College team? Anybody, anybody at all? No, we love you, but a break is good. We're all looking forward to the break. Your parents are excited about having you back. Like, we're all looking forward to the break. But, man, our mission does not stop just because we're not meeting every week. Our mission does not stop just because there's no two chapels a week. 
Our mission does not stop just because you're not going to small group on a Monday night. Our mission does not stop just because you're on Zoom and you don't like it. You wish you were face-to-face. So what? Your mission continues. You still have a mission. You still have a mission. 2 Corinthians 5, 18 through 20 says this, All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. I had, was thinking about this message and thinking, man, what if a student went, hey, what are you doing during the break? I'm just going to be a minister of the reconciliation. We're making a whole bunch of other plans. Come on, somebody. And God's saying, hey, do, do those plans, but in those plans, don't forget to be a minister of the reconciliation of Christ when you go there. Keep doing it. So how do we do it? Here's the how. How can we be a great messenger? Man, accept the personal responsibility. I would love to tell you that once you decide to go into ministry full-time, once you decide you're a ministry leader, that every day you just wake up and you innately and naturally just accept the personal responsibility of being a Jesus follower. But, man, I don't want to break it to you. That just doesn't happen. And that every day there's this moment where you have to go, hold on a second. Like you did the first time, God, I surrender my life to you. It's yours. It's not mine. There's a lot of stuff in this world and ministry leadership environments that will feed you. And if you're not careful, you'll keep showing up to that buffet expecting to get that and it'll leave you empty. But waking up every day and just accepting the personal responsibility, man, there's somebody in my path today that doesn't know who my God is. And I get a chance. And I want to tell you this, there's no plan B. Like, what if you were the one God's depending on? It changes everything. It's easy to go, ah, somebody else will tell him. What if he doesn't? What if that part-time employee that you're working with that drives you crazy? You're like, ah, ugh, I can't stand him. What if nobody else tells him? What if you're the best shot? What about your cousin or your family member? What about your parents? I know students in this room who are paying, praying for their parents to meet Jesus. What if there is no plan B that God's plan all along was Jesus in you to do that? It changes our outlook on everything to accept the personal responsibility. Um, statistics say that, that 50% of people will never come to church. And a lot of times our answer is, I will just invite them. We'll get them to at the movies. 50% of the people outside this building are never walking in this building. So God said, I got a plan. And that plan is all these Hans College students that I'm about to send everywhere. I'm going to put them out there and we get a chance to lead them to Jesus. Romans 10, 13 through 15 says this, for everyone who calls in the name of the Lord will be saved. But how can they call on him to save them unless they believe in him? And how can they believe in him if they have never heard about him? And how can they hear about him unless somebody from Highlands College tells them in a break? And how will anyone go and tell them without being sent? Highlands College, you're getting sent today. Face-to-face -face part of the semester is over. You are being sent. It's not just a break. You're being sent. Everybody say, I'm being sent. It's a break. We're taking a break, but you're also being sent back into the harvest field. Um, one of the ways that you can, can be a great messenger is just develop a personal relationship. That's one of the points. And I think in this year, as much as any year, man, 2020 has been wild. We, we've heard that. I feel like every sermon that we've heard has started with some kind of disclaimer about the year that it's been. You know, spiritually, it's been a year where the enemy has done everything in his power to separate people. So COVID is real. I'm not making light of COVID, but with COVID and how we've had to respond to it, it initially started off with there's physical separation. And you guys have known, it was like awkward to get, be around people again. Some of us have gone through that, like, I'm not even sure, like, do we hug? Do, I, I don't know. On Sunday, I'm like, what, what, are the, what are the ground rules? I don't know how to interact. We'll all figure that out. So there was, there was a physical separation. Um, and then with everything that went on in our country, which is evil, and we're, we're believing for redemption, but the enemy used that for racial separation. Now we're separating. It's, it's like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay over here. Okay, even more, I'm going to stay over. i got to pick a side. I'm going to stay over here. And we just exited the time, and it's not over yet, where there's political separation. No, once again, I'm going to pick a side. I'm over here. Separate, 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 separate. And we as the body of Christ, we as the body of Christ, only need to take our cues from Jesus. And then when Jesus walked into a situation... He found the person most unlike him there and said, I'd like to hang out with you. Jesus and Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus, the wee little man was he. <laughs> Climbed up in a sycamore tree for the Lord he wanted to see. Now Jesus, because he's Jesus, knows that Zacchaeus is shady. Because he knows everything. 
Some of y'all still think you're hiding something from Jesus. You ain't. He knows, right? He knows that. But here's the deal. The entire town knew Zacchaeus was shady. Y'all got that person you know in your town or your family that you're like, they don't loan him any money. Like, you, you know, the entire town knew. And Jesus said, hey, Zacchaeus, let's have lunch. Let's hang out. He built a personal relationship. The Bible does not tell us what, what they talked about. I wish it did. I would love to know what happened in the conversation. All I know is that because of a meal and Jesus sitting down and spending time and getting to know Zacchaeus personally, that 10 verses later, Zacchaeus walks out a changed man following Jesus. That's the model for us. Find the people. Man, in, in fact, if we're repulsed by the people that are most unlike us as believers, that's religion, not Jesus. That's what the Pharisees did. So we see somebody's political view or their stance. or man, there's what they, what they said on social media. Some of y'all get trolled every day by, by your own like, lack of willpower just to ignore it and let it go. You're letting people troll you every single day. They're not even tagging you, and you're like, ooh, 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 uh. if, I, if I say something, though, Pastor Matt's going to say something to me about, but it's still in your heart. doesn't matter if you posted it. It was right here. Instead of going, God, man, I'd really love to have lunch with them. Just to find out their viewpoint, try to understand more. Um, John Maxwell says this. He says, I do not have to be like them to reach them, but I do have to like them. You're going to come in contact with people during the break that you're not going to be like. They're different from you, and that's okay, but I can remember when I was different too. <laughs> and I can remember how like, that did not stop somebody from like, just going, hey, man, God loves you. When my difference, me being, the Bible says we were enemies of God. Not, they'll get saved later. The Bible says you were an enemy of God. And Jesus is like, I'm going to chase you down and get time with you. He pursued us. Are you grateful that God pursued us? Everybody. Come on, are you grateful for that? Um, 1 Peter 3, 15 through 16. I want to get through this because I want to get to the application of this for everybody. But, um, but in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. Here's the challenge for the break. Always be pre prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. Somebody's going to say, I believe it. We're going to get stories about this in January. You're going to go home, and they're going to be like, man, you're different. What's up? Hey, you know what? You didn't respond to your sister the same way this time. Like, what changed? What happened? And I do not want your answer to be Highlands College. I want, that's not your identity, everybody. Your answer is a semester at school. No, your answer is the hope of Jesus in your life that's changing your heart and your life. Your answer can't be, oh, man, I'm different. I, resp I had more patience because the practicum I'm in. And like, we laugh about that. But if we're not careful, we'll start giving credit to all those other things. And the only place that credit needs to go is to Jesus for changing your life. That's, that's the entire place. That's it, right? All right, that's the good messenger part. Here's the good message. And this is for somebody today. I've talked to students who are scared to go back. They're like, man, I, I just, and I want you to hear this as a, um, as a messenger that's going to share this message, but we have to remember this message ourselves. We talked about this in, in, in other moments in chapel, that in, if we stop experiencing, we have nothing to give to anybody else. We have to keep experiencing. Here's the good message. God loves you and sent his son to pay for your sins. Somebody messed up in this room last night. You looked at something you shouldn't have looked at, or you thought something you shouldn't have thought, and the enemy would love to say, this disqualifies you. You don't get a grade on this, but I know your grade. I know how you're doing this. And I want you to be reminded, man, that Jesus paid for your sins. God loves you. That's the message we're taking as messengers. Here's another message I want you to take with you during the holidays, to tell the people around you, come on, in a world like 2020 has given us, you can have peace no matter the circumstance. Come on, somebody. People say, what's, what's different about you? Has life been easier? No, it's been 2020 for me like everybody else. But I can have peace because of who my God is. He's got me. God never promises peace on earth, everybody. Christmas is coming up. You're going to hear that in a Charlie Brown Christmas song. God never promised you peace on earth. He promises on earth peace for those that trust in him. Being a Jesus follower doesn't excuse you from walking through everything that everybody else walks through. 
We just don't have to walk through the same way. We get to walk through with peace because our God has it. John 16, says this. I've told you all this so that you may have, say it, peace in me here on earth. You will have many trials and sorrows. The Greek for that is just 2020. Um, many trials and sorrows. But take heart because I have overcome the world. And, um, and some of you guys need to hear this last one, the last message that we want to take to everybody we're around. Hey, you're going to make it. Hey, students, look at me. You're going to make it. Parents, you're going to make it. I know there's financial. I know there's family. I know there's work. I know there's politics. I know there's social issues that are real. Hey, you're going to make it. God is going to get us through this. It's going to be okay. I talked to a student the other night, small group, scared to death about going back home. You know who you are. We talked. You're going to make it. It's going to be okay. I, am, I was thinking about how to end today and uh, with it being kind of the, the last chapel. First of all, I want to point out to, to Jill, I'm five minutes early. So I just want to go ahead and throw, throw that out there that I, I'm, I'm giving it back because I took it earlier on in the semester. Um, <laughs> I feel like I'm breaking even now. Um, um, all semester, um, there's been this rallying point, and it's been chapel services for the, for the parents and the guests in the room. The chapel twice a week, this is our church service. So on Sundays we serve, but these are the moments twice a week where, I mean, this is for you guys. This is church. This is for us to lean in and to grow and thinking about, you know, walking back out um, in, into, uh, I almost want to call it the not real world because I feel like this is the real world where the supernatural gets talked about every day. We trust Jesus. We're encouraged to trust Jesus every single day. I feel like that's real. For the believer, that's real. But we're going to go help people that are living in an artificial world who are stressed out by everything around every corner. And we get, walk in, get, to, get to walk into that. And I thought of a story. My kids and I, uh, just a little while back, we were uh, coming back from, we're the Huntsville people. Any Huntsville people in the room? Come on. There's always all, all two of you. Okay, great. Um, and uh, almost everybody. And... Um, we're coming back from Huntsville. We stopped at the state park, and uh, we go on this hike, and we're kind of we're far away from the parking lot, and it's about probably, I don't know, it's probably a mile from this parking area, and we're looking at wildlife because when you have little kids, you look for any opportunity you can just to let them run and burn off the energy. And um, we go into this little kind of this building at the end of this path, and it's, it's just a big building with glass in it, so you can see these birds and, and animals so you don't disturb them. And I walk out of the building, and go back on the trail, and there is, a, is a, a, a man face down in the dirt, just right here. So I'm with my kids. Nobody's out there with us. I'll walk out, and there's a man face down on the path. So I immediately spin him over, and I'm like, hey, sir, are you, are you okay? His glasses are broken. His hands are still in his pockets. And, I'm, I'm, and, and he's, his, he's fighting for life, and I start, like, bringing up every bit of knowledge I could from, from like lifeguard days and CPR. And I'm, I'm like, this is, can you imagine being in this moment? I'm, I'm, I'm freaked out. This is, this is a real guy. I don't know where he came from. I don't know the story. And so I tell Heather, hey, run and get help. Just run. Go get help. And so she takes off and three of the kids go, but Nora's legs are too small. And so she stays. I don't know why I'm crying. Sorry. Um, and so I'm doing CPR on this guy. Nora is screaming. And then I hear a voice way down the trail who screams, Bill! And it's his wife. And she just recognized something has happened to Bill down the trail. And so she runs up. And she's draped over him over his body and I'm doing CPR and I say hey I gotta ask you a question I'm just looking at her now I'm just working and CPR is like a physical fitness activity it, it's it, you wouldn't think that and I'm getting tired doing it so I gotta ask you a question like do you do you know Jesus she says yes we both do and I said well we really gotta trust what we can't see right now we can't put our trust in what we're seeing in this moment and I'm working and I'm working and Nora's screaming and um and Oak runs back down the trail, and he says, Dad, the, the, the EMT's here. Like they're, they're coming. And like a minute and a half goes by, and this guy walks down the trail, and he's got his kit and his bag. And man, it's like he's walking 
like into Publix. He's just, and there's this, there's this casualness about like just, and I'm going, this guy's dying. So I start yelling, dude, run, run, he needs you. And he's just like, so we left. He didn't make it. He died. And the thought I had, though, is like, how many people in the cities we're walking to? Like, you have no idea what's happening in their life. And if we're not careful, we go into break or the weekend or our day off, and we're just like, when we got the kit and the tools to help them and save them and bring them out of where they are and bring them back to life. And for me, I'm like, man, we cannot be casual with our mission. This is not just a break. This is a chance to go find dying people and help them. Because one day they will die with his hands in his pockets. He didn't have time to break his fall. Gone. And we think, I got another, we got another day. I'll tell him next shift. I'll tell him next holiday. Miss, I'll forgive him next time. It's, it's like we got, no, you don't. You don't have time. You don't know how much time you have. You don't know how much time they have. We know we have a mission. It's mission critical. So we shouldn't be watching the clock. We should just be working and going for it. So we've been singing this song all semester. We're going to sing it. I just want you guys to sing it in your seat. We'll stand up in a second. Um, And it's kind of been this rallying cry for us. I remember one of the first chapel creative meetings uh, with Jill and Becca and Mac and Warren and Chris Han and John, the team, um, we talked about we wanted every chapel to be this, to have this. It, this was going to be our revival space. This was going to be the space where if God was going to do something in the college, it would start here and there'd be a, this river of revival that would flow through everything else, like academically and sports and small groups. And so we, had, we talked about this quote. I want to show you guys this quote from Christmas Evans, the guy way back when. It'll come up there in just a second. Here's what it says. Revival is God bending down to the dying embers of a fire just about to go out and breathing into it until it burst once again into roaring flame. That's what revival is. And we've been praying it for us. God, do it here, do it here, do it here, do it here, do it here. God, do it here. But I know that somebody's praying it in San Antonio. And Selena's going to San Antonio. And somebody's praying it in Montgomery. And China's going back home to Montgomery. And somebody's praying it in Mississippi. And you might, you might be going there for the holidays, but God's like, I, it's coming. You're praying it. I know it doesn't look like it's good, but I, there's this thing that's about to happen. These people, they're about, to, they're about to leave this place they've been out. And you've been asking for revival. We're not asking for us anymore. Now we're saying, hey, God, don't just send it. Like, send it. Let's go. Let's, let's take it out there. Let's send it. Let's take it out. So I want to ask you this, who is it? What's their name in your life that you know needs a good message from a good messenger? Is it your parents? I want you to get a name, write it down. Is it a coworker? Is it a former schoolmate? Some of y'all are so worried about man, but my old crew, you are not going back to the same person you came here as. That's not the same friend, you're going back different. You're going back as, as a fire starter of revival. That's what you're going back as. Going back into it. And so I want us to sing this, but I want you to pray. When we sing it the first time, I want you to pray just for the person that you're thinking about, the person in your city. Man, who needs a good message from a good messenger in your life? You guys, you guys pray right now. Let's pray. Heaven break, come now in power. Cover this land like you've done it before. Would you do it again? Lord, send revival, Lord, send it now, move your spirit, heaven break out, come now in power, cover this land, like you've done it before, would you do it again? Y'all keep praying, Kiri, come here real quick. So I, I want to get, I was going to pray over you guys, and I was like, man, I don't know if I would pray with the same perspective is what you're walking into. Um, you're finishing up. Today's, today's it, right? In fact, four semesters, where are you? You guys stand up real quick. 
I want to have Carrie pray for you in just a second, but um, I don't want you looking at today as a finish line. This has all been warm up. <laughs> Today's a day I'm starting. And hey, hold on. I don't want you to start. I want you to finish. Because it's going to be because you have moments like this, though. You remember your mission. Your mission is to take the gospel everywhere you go. And that doesn't mean a staff position. It might, it might mean Starbucks or UPS. Your mission is this. Take the gospel. Build the local church. That's it. That's your mission. Don't try to control what it looks like. Just be on mission. You are being sent out not to finish school, to be placed for the gospel everywhere you go. So I want you to pray for us. And just, man, y'all go ahead and stand up. Let's pray. We're going to go back into the song, but I don't want us to sing it as God sent it just to us. Let's pray it as a sending out, that we're moving out into our cities, our homes, our neighborhoods. Come on, pray for us, Carrie. Come on, let's lift our voices. Jesus, we love you. And Lord, all we say is we're so thankful for what you've done in this semester, Father, but most importantly, what you've done in us, Father. Lord, we're more equipped and more confident now than ever. And Lord, we choose to walk in the confidence and the authority that you've already placed on our lives, Jesus. Lord, wherever we're going, back home, staying, wherever you sent us, Lord, all we want to be is faithful and obedient to your voice. So Lord, right now, we ask that we would have an open heart and an open mind, whatever you want from us, Father. Lord, we just want obedience to you, Father. So Lord, we say, come, have revival, Father, but it starts within us, Jesus. And so Lord, we say, come, have your way. guys so 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 much um we love you uh here, here's just a couple plans housekeeping for uh what's going to happen later on uh, for, for students current students man this is the first scoop of a two scoop chapel you, you need to know that and so here's what's going to happen in just a second is uh we're going to go into lunch so preview day guests you will get your lunch on the right hand side of the lobby and you will eat in the lobby just outside of those doors for everybody else staff included we'll get our food either on the left hand side of the lobby or in the cafeteria there'll be a line in there as well and then you spread out around the property there's 450,000 amazing square feet spread out get some space and then be back in this room for current students and staff be back in this room you don't want to miss it at one o'clock y'all are the best we'll see you at lunch everybody here we go
Grace, so I will find.